Hey, my loves, it's me, Keisha, a.k.a. Color Me Pink, and I am here with my review on the new season of The Real Housewives of New York. New York is back after a two-year hiatus. I have been waiting on this since it was announced that they were doing a Roni reboot. Roni is one of my favorite out of the Real Housewives franchise, so I have been so excited about this, and I must say that the ladies did not disappoint. So if you did not watch the episode tonight, the season premiere episode, please make sure that you check it out this week to get prepared for next week's episode because chef's kiss, chef's kiss. I was very satisfied. So let's get into my all tea, all shade, Real Housewives of New York, season 14, episode one review. All right. So we start off by meeting Brynn, who is like the Sonya of the show. She is a brand marketing consultant. Um, I believe she's mixed. I believe she's black and white. Very beautiful girl, red hair, different color eyes, model, statuesque body. Uh, very flirty, sexy, kind of bimbo-ish, ditzy, but you like you like her. It was great to start the show off with her because she has such a big personality, really beautiful girl. Then we have Jenna, who is an interior designer and entrepreneur. She used to run J. Crew. Um, she got outed about being gay, honey. Uh, she is just a fashionista, a style icon, and I bow down to thee. Is there anybody that I could compare Jenna to out of any of the franchises? Hmm. I would say she's a little like Carol Radswell, but I'm going to say this as far as the hip, chic, edginess, you know, that real New York, New York City type of vibe. She's just a cool girl. You know what I'm saying? She's the type of woman that you want to hang around because she's just so damn dope and cool until Carol started acting like, you know, how she acted her last season. But that's who I would compare Jenna to. Then we have Jessel, who is a fashion publicist. If I could compare her to anybody off the first episode, I would say, hmm, bunch of kids. Hmm, maybe Kristen from New York. Maybe her, um, hmm, I don't know. I don't know about Jessel. Don't know about her. Sai, who y'all already know I am obsessed with. I'm obsessed with her YouTube channel. If you do not follow her YouTube channel, it is Scout the City. She is a fashion influencer. She does luxury fashion. Her children are on her channel. She vlogs or whatever. Um, Sai, I will say, hmm, out of anybody on the show, who could I could... I would say Cy is like Erica Jane from uh, Beverly Hills in the fact that came from nothing, made it to the top, still got my roots, know where I came from, but, you know, now I've made it here. I'm a fashion girl, that sense. Not their personalities, but as far as their backstory. Then you got Uba, who is a gorgeous model. I mean, she is still... Stunningly beautiful. Oh, by the way, Sai is Afro-Latina. Let me remind you of that. Uba, like I said, who is absolutely stunning. She is actually cousins with Chanel Ion from Real Housewives of Dubai. Baby, I would love to see them together. Put them on a girl's trip together immediately. Um, she's just fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. If there's anybody that I could compare her to, it would be her own cousin. You know what I'm saying? She's just a little bit more tamer than Chanel, but they both got that, that vibe. Then lastly, we have Erin, who is a realtor. And if I could say she reminded me of anybody, it might be, um, hmm, 
Because Aaron is like cool, chic. Hmm, a little round, a rough around the edges, kind of tough, a little bit family oriented. Hmm, that's a tough one. Off rip what comes to my head is old girl that used to be on New York, the holla, you know, the one that used to work for Puffy, but she's not as obnoxious as her. And I would maybe say. Maybe like a Kyle a little bit. I don't know. I'm, I don't really got a good read on her. But I love the new show opener. I love that when they're holding their apples, like it's just not everybody like posed separately. Like you got somebody leaning on somebody. Like you, it's like a real group of girlfriends. You know what I'm saying? And I love that, that this is a totally different show than all of the rest in the Housewives franchise. So, the episode begins with Cy having Brynn and Jessel over to her Brooklyn Brownstone. And that's another thing that I love about the reboot is that these women all live in different boroughs of New York City. And that's what makes it even more authentic. Um, Cy is at home with her beautiful children, London and Rio, who I'm obsessed with love them she was like uh y'all gotta come in here and wash these dishes i want people to think we nasty <laughs> so london her beautiful daughter who is her mini me and a ballerina model all of that stuff gets up and put the dishes up so we find out that you know Cy was a round away girl growing up she was just like us wearing her jays to school her nautica coat her wrap her doobie like she was that girl and still is that girl Jesso arrives child with her twin boys named Kai and Rio so we got two Rios very cute kids but you know they like one or two years old so it was a lot she got her mama with her her mama's over here from London and you know Brian was like you know when I'm around sign her kids like my ovaries are just like give me a baby give me a baby but when she around Jessel and her baby she like mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, plan B me <laughs> so then we see Uba meet up with Aaron in the park for coffee and Uba asks her how is she doing with Brian and we find out that on the night of BravoCon, when they all got introduced to the world, that they had all planned to have a group dinner with their husbands and stuff. But Cy and Brynn lied and said that they were tired and going home, but really met up at Cipriani's to have dinner. So she was feeling some type of way because, A, why did you have to lie? And it came across like y'all was too good to go to the restaurant that she wanted to go to, which was some restaurant everybody was saying online is the name Catch because apparently Catch is just not the cat's meow <laughs> and nobody wants to be seen caught dead there. So um, she's feeling some type of way about that, but she's more upset with Brynn than Cy, which was a little perplexing to me, but it is what it is. So... Jessel told Aaron that Cy and Brynn were talking about her, <laughs> apparently. So we go to Brynn, Jessel, and Cy, and Brynn says, you know, Aaron says she's been distancing, distancing herself from you, Cy, because you rubbed her the wrong way two weeks before when we all got together. So apparently Cy made some comments about the fact that Aaron had a cheese platter or cheese charcuterie and basically was like mm, you eat cheese like <laughs> and this is why we love the housewives this is why we needed a reboot because cheese my nigga cheese bro this is how rich folks are they sit up there and argue about cheese this is the preposterous Things that we have been missing from the Housewives franchise. The all out, like just over opulence of it all. That it's so ridiculous. And I was like, this is, this is, this is right up my alley. And it just gave me the vibe of sex in the city, but the real life version. Oh, I'm so, the fashions? We thought Beverly Hills 
was the most fashionable out the girls, Beverly Hills in Dubai. The new Ronnie got Dubai and Beverly Hills beat by a landslide. They are killing it with the fashions, honey. Killing it. Killing it. The fashions that we not getting on and just like that, we getting from Roni, okay? So, um, where was I at? Sa si says in her confessional, Erin is always mad at someone, so she's the common denominator here. So Erin, we already know now that Erin gonna have a problem with everybody. Like, So that's why she kind of give me Kyle, because you know Kyle always taking a fist to something. Like, shut up. Um, so Erin is mad because Sa si supposedly... Like I said, made a comment about her eating cheese. But Sai says that that's a lie. She was like, I was eating the cheese. Like, what? What? Huh? So Jessel has Jenna over to her crib. And Jenna says that she's going to have a black tie night so all the girls can get together. Aaron has three kids and her husband, Abe, who is Jewish. We meet his family and everything. Really nice family. Then we meet Sai's husband, David. Who's retired. Now, anybody that watches Sai's YouTube channel knows that she does not show her husband. And the reason why she doesn't show her husband is because it just became like an ongoing joke not to show his face. But if you ever Googled her, you would have saw a picture of them together on Google Images or whatever. So it wasn't like he was like deliberately trying to hide who he was. It just had become an ongoing joke on her channel. But now, of course, they're on this show, so we're seeing his face. And uh, he looked exactly like he did on the photographs. Obviously, he had a coin. <laughs> you know, he's retired now. So they have a really cute relationship. Sai doesn't really take things too seriously. Like, she's a fun girl to be around. And, you know, she got that flavor to her. Jessel asks Aaron, when they talk on FaceTime before the black tie event, did she tell Brynn um, about this whole Cheesegate thing that she felt some type of way about Sai? And she was like, no, I said that in a joking manner. She was like, see, this is my problem with Brynn because she lie and she starts stuff. So I was like, okay. So as of right now, even when they've been doing press for this season, Aaron still do not see it for Brynn. So they're going to be going at it at the reunion. So... We get to Jenna's house, baby. And let me tell you something. Jenna's house made me want to orgasm. That gold countertop in her kitchen with that gold sink. Baby, I would be gay just to be her girlfriend so I could sleep over. Girl! But Jenna just got that thing to her. Like, she just got that masculine, feminine energy about her that's just so just, mm, like, yeah, yeah. Jenna is that girl. Um, Then her outfit for the night was just everything. Like, yes! When she was sitting in that chair, lean back before everybody got there, baby, that whole thing was a picture. It was like... You could have put that in any magazine for a magazine shoot. She's just so cool. So cool. Oh, my God. So the ladies start to arrive. Uba's outfit was giving me life with the mixed animal prints. And her, she's just so tall and statuesque. Like, she can wear anything. She looked beautiful. So Aaron ends up confronting Cy about, you know, lying about, you know, not wanting to hang out with them the night of BravoCon. And Sai apologizes or whatever. And she basically was like, see, this is why me and Sai don't have issues because she acknowledges when she wrong and apologizes, whereas Brian be on some other stuff. So Aaron says that she's turned off by Brian, honey. So Brian ends up arriving and she is scared to be around Aaron because she knows that a confrontation is coming. But however, she puts on her big girl panties and goes over to speak to her or whatever. So Aaron and her confession was like, I'm not going to get into it with her immediately. I'm going to eat me some cheese first. Then I'm going to F her up. <laughs> and this is why I'm here for the new New York. Cause you won't hear the old school girls say they're going to F somebody up, especially a white girl. Like, these girls are hip and witty, and I'm loving it. And it's not like we're going to have, like, any racial tension or anything like that, like, loving this new cast. So they end up playing the game, and Brynn say that the type of PR 
are in that she like is the massage therapy ones where it's like, oh, I'm getting a massage. And all of a sudden you start playing with my cootie cat. <laughs> and I was like, girl, I like them too. Child, we got something to co in common. We got something in common. And then Erin says that her husband don't want to <clears throat> ejaculate until she. And I was like, well. He's a giver, not a taker. Okay. I see you, Erin. I see why y'all got three kids. Okay. She said that turned him on when she... I was like, yes. I ain't never met one of those, but... Mm, all right. So, Cheesegate ends up coming up. But you're not going to tell me that Jenna didn't plan to have all that cheese there on purpose, child. And Sa si says that it was an a-hole move for, you know... Aaron to be feeling some type of way about that. But Aaron says that Brent lied. Uba in her confession was like, it's mind boggling to me that these women are literally sitting up here fighting about cheese. But <laughs> this is why we love housewives. So Aaron pulls Brent to the back because Jenna is tired of them going back and forth about some dang on cheese, child. So Brent tries to focus on Aaron about to kill her but gets distracted by all the opulence and glamour of Jenna's house and all of her beautiful clothes and shoes and things. And Brynn's personality is just so funny to me. Like, she is funny. But you can tell, like, after a while, all that, I'm just a ditzy girl, is going to get annoying and probably be like her get out of jail free car like you can't be mad at me because i'm the dumb girl like nah girl because you know what you're doing so i can see that becoming a problem for the ladies after a while even though they all are friends with her and know her you know to an extent so they go into jenna's bedroom and they talking aaron was like i feel like you decided who you were going to align yourself with and then got weird with me and that that that's messed up you know if we all have been friends and then we get on TV and it's like you've aligned yourself with certain girls and now you start acting funny towards me? Like, what's that about? And they really were all friends with each other, which is one of the things that I like most about this cast. So Aaron and her end up hugging it out and Aaron ends up falling through Jenna's chair and thinking she broke it, but she didn't. And then they play a joke, a prank, where they put on Jenna's clothes to see if they she's going to recognize that they got on her clothes. It took her a minute, but she finally realized it. And then uh, Jenna, I mean, Aaron and Brent end up getting uh, stuck together with the sequins and the lace. It was just really, really cute. It was a fun episode. We got to meet the ladies. Like I said, the vibe was just so New York, so sex in the city, so current, so new. It was just beauty and opulence, fashion, and everything that you would want from a Real Housewives of New York in 2023. So I highly recommend you tune in. I'm really excited about this season and how things are going to play out. I give the season premiere episode an A. I'm so happy that Roni is back. Let me know down below in the comment section if you enjoyed the season premiere episode as much as I did. Who are your faves after watching episode one? My fave would be Brynn and, of course, Cy. I live for Cy and Jenna. Those are my faves off riff. Uba, of course, I love her too. My least favorites as of right now are Aaron and Jessel. You know, more so Jessel because she didn't really give much to me this episode. But, yeah, let's talk down below, you guys. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. I love you, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.